the Great Wall of China, traversing mountains and deserts for thousands of miles. The wall weaves a story of sacrifice and survival, of endurance and achievement. The Chinese call it Wanli Changcheng, which translates as the endless wall. To be able to put an event on at the Great Wall and bring a bunch of people that want to find out who they are, how they can push themselves to their own breaking point was a dream come true for me. I think it takes a special person to take on an event where you don't know what's going to happen. We're all bringing in something different to this. Why are you here? I want to push myself to the limit, test myself. I'm going to finish. We're all going to finish. Highly unlikely. From the moment we stepped off the plane, this thing started for us. You know, there were definitely people that hadn't left the country before. For the most part, we don't know the language. We certainly don't know our way around. Hurry up! My team in particular, we had one guy whose luggage didn't show up. Before the event even started, we were on an adventure. Let's go up here, you ready? Runners! Yes, sir! The part of the wall that we were on is not a part of the wall that people get to go on. So we were seeing things that people dream of seeing. William Lindsay was our host and got special permission for Spartan to take us up there. I'm William Lindsay and at the age of 28, I came to China for the first time to become the first foreigner to track along the whole length of the Great Wall. When I saw the wall for the first time, to be honest, I was scared to hell because it was steep, it was remote, and this journey was through forbidden China. That was a phenomenal psychological challenge. 1,700 miles, over 78 days, nine arrests, one deportation, two passports. I realized the journey was the victory and these barriers were in fact my path to victory that I needed to overcome. Everything we do must be done perfectly the first time. Do you understand? Yes. Go. Agogi is challenge after challenge after challenge. Sprint. That is not running, that's walking. Sprint! Once you think that you've conquered something, the next thing comes up. Burpees. Hurry up. You are happy. Burpees. You are not smiling. We're pulling you off. 21. You're not together. Start over. Keep smiling. For this event in particular, the Cryptea pushed us more than other agogis. I see you slacking off like that again. You're gone. I think it broke a lot of people. I think they took it really, really personally. All the pain you feel right now is over. All you got to do is ring this bell. No, ring that bell! Agogi participants are paying us to give them an experience equivalent to climbing Mount Everest, rowing across the ocean, biking across the United States. We've got 60 hours to give them that experience. And the only way we're going to achieve that 
is by giving them the unexpected. Take your shoes off. You're not going to wear shoes for the rest of the event. If they know exactly what they're going to get, it's not that hard. The thing that breaks people is the unexpected. Let me know when your feet are bleeding. Anybody could be good when things are good. It's the really amazing person, right, that is good when things are bad. Just ring it, man. And so we've got 60 plus hours to make things bad. We have a medical dropout. This person needs to be collected from Village 5. We all need to tie in. The last person needs to tie in and do a double fisherman, okay? We were tethered together and we were going on the most dangerous part of the wall. Shuffle up so everyone's on the road. There were times where it was just a few inches from one side to the other with a 70 foot drop on each side. You have a 40 pound pack on your back plus your weight. If you fall, you're going down. As exhausted as I am, and even though I'm definitely seeing hallucinations of pirates and white cats in front of me, I've got to pull it together. Because if one team member falls, we all fall. Keep closer together. You keep closer together than that uh, slack issue one, okay? Every single thing that you had learned at this point, you needed to put into action. We also had to look at some of our teammates and say, you're not in a place that you can go up this part. She's off the rope, and she's uh, at my side in a safe location. Respiratory rate of about 37 per minute. That's very high rest for a young female. This should be below 20. In this event, there were seven females. Five of us made it through. We looked at each other and decided that we were going to help each other out. <laughs> so often, women are kind of pushed to the side with the gender roles that society has placed upon us. In a male-dominated sport, usually a man steps up immediately and the woman steps to the side and follows. But this event, the women absolutely stepped up. When I was leading, when the females were leading, the men on my team in particular listened to us, and when we had a suggestion, they took it. They didn't question us. They just worked with us. You could see that the women were just relentless, just had no quit. This agogi in particular, I really did get a chance to shine. Everybody going into a Nagogi goes in with the idea that as long as you don't medically DNF or you don't drop yourself, you'll be handed a medal. The idea is just survive, just make it through. I think Joe's idea is not for people to just eke by. He wants people to grow and learn and thrive. This was the first Agogi where this really came into play. <laughs> When it came down to the end, we believed everybody was getting a medal. That wasn't the case. We gave medals to people that were tough as nails and they really deserved their medals. And they were just exceptional. Some of us got medals. Everybody else did not. You need to be able to move forward without a medal. 
A gogi is much bigger than, than a race. It's not a race, right? It's, it's a way for people to reach self-actualization, to find out who they are, to drop the ego. And so it's about the whole journey leading up to the event, and all the hours and training and sacrifice and delayed gratification, and then the pain and suffering of the event. And those memories, and those bonds, and those changes. That's what it's all about. I think it's part of the human spirit always to wonder what's it like over there. But when you go there and you breathe the air and you feel the cold and you feel the heat, it's at these times you realize there's no substitute for actually going and doing. Only by coming here have I realized that actually to reach the end of the Great Wall is an unassailable dream. It really is a lifelong challenge to see and understand and now to contribute to the protection of the Great Wall of China. For me, the Great Wall is something that just continues. We're constantly needing to evolve and learn and become better people our entire life, right to the grave. So a gogi is just one small sliver of this learning process we all have to go through. It's not over, just one step. You got about a thousand more to go. I think a gogi is one of the most challenging things a person can do. It will break you down. You've made it so far. You think that you will never make it through. You just can't do it. But then you do. And you realize that you know things that you didn't know 60 hours ago. And things that were holding you back are suddenly the things that are pulling you forward and moving you forward. It's like learning to read for the first time, where suddenly you want to read everything and you want to know everything. This isn't the end. We're just scratching the surface. When you're feeling the heat, when you're thinking, can I carry on? When you stare that Spartan helmet in the face, think, what is your dream? And are you gonna do it? <laughs>